So at the end of this job, I'm going to use my little contraption to uh, get the film down into the shaker oven without having to use my hands down inside too much. So I'll show you that process once that's uh, done. So this gang sheet's 31% uh, complete. And then after this one, then there's a small one that uh, won't take too long. And once that one's done, then I'll show you my process. One thing too, I don't know how you guys, if you have this shaker, I put the bar that the film rides over on the, there's three notches. I put mine as far over to the right towards the printer as I can. So, I mean, it's, you can see it's hitting the pound or hitting the film, but it's not as aggressive when it's on that middle slot. I notice when it's in that middle slot, it hits it so hard that it knocks all the powder out of your loop down below. So you're doing this, taking up from below and bringing it up here more often. So I haven't had any issues using the shaker where I have it. So I'm just leaving it there. You, uh, again, if you have this oven uh, shaker, let me know what you're doing and uh, we'll uh, go from there. It's always helpful to know how other people are doing stuff. All right, so this print's coming to an end here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I finish it off to get it through. So once it's done, I have room to feed. So once the printer goes idle, I'll manually feed it down as far as I can until it hits the bottom of the shaker. And I'll leave the button on uh, step auto so this only moves when the film's in front of that laser beam down there. So once it hits that laser beam again, or breaks it, comes up above it, the conveyor belt will stop and that'll give me enough room to move it some more so we're gonna move it again that's about as far down as I go I put one magnet here I take my scissors and I cut it there then I take my clip with my string I put it on right here and I move the magnet and then that becomes my point that I hold on to while I feed it down into the bin. So it's towards the bottom. Actually right there it is on the bottom. So sometimes I have to do some things where I bring it up just enough so I can get the powder out of the drawer. So I'll open this up so we can see it better. So but that's it. I just add a little bit more, just keep feeding it in. And that way I don't have a big excessive tail. I mean, I literally have enough that I don't even really cut it off. And then um, I'm not putting my hands down in there. I'm potentially rubbing the ink with my sleeve or dropping the film. So, Takes a little bit of time. I'll speed some of this up so you don't have to watch it all. Still got a good amount of powder in the loop. So at this point, you can turn off your preheat, which heats up that 
tray with the magnets on because the film is no longer going over that tray. So we can turn that off. And then when I look down here, I can see that I got plenty of powder to finish this job. So I'll turn off powder auto. So no more powder is gonna go down. There's enough in that loop to finish this up. So there's my little clamp there. So before I used to reach in with my arm over there and all the way down as far as I could. And then I'd put my left arm in here to grab the film. So I'd slowly lower it down to where I can let it go. So now I just use this where it's almost to a point where I can let it go. I don't have to hold it until it's all the way at the bottom. Sometimes I do. As I can see, it's getting a good coverage of powder over the remaining ink that's on the film. So when I see that, I'm pretty satisfied. I mean, realistically, I can let go of the string at this point. I'm not holding the string any longer. Okay. Powder has covered the rest of the ink on the film. And then I just let it uh, start coming up with that little clamp on it. And then when it gets up here on this bar, um, I'll take it off. So I'm going to speed up the video here and then I'll show you when it gets up here. Right now it's about halfway up. Coming up to the uh, powder shaker. You'll hear a loud knock. I mean, you can hear the paddle going now, but you'll hear it make a loud knock when the paddle actually hits the, um, the plastic clamp. And when, once I get that loud tap sound, I know it's up high enough. Now I'm not here. So right there. So that was when um, I turned it off because at that point I think all the powder has been taken off of the film. So it's coming up right now so you'll be able to see it. It'll come up right here in the middle. One thing to be aware of, you have to keep an eye on this. You don't want it to go inside the oven. I almost did that once. So at this point, once it starts coming up, you can you know, grab this piece here and just undo that. Pull the string out through the shaker and you're done. That's all she wrote. So again, that's um, my process. I know some other people stated that they We'll run the film all the way down, even when it's done printing. They'll go ahead and just manually feed the printer so that the film goes all the way down in here. And then the, they're cutting it here, but then they have to pull all that film back up into the printer. You have a lot of excess slack of film that's not rolled up on the roll anymore. You're bringing all that powder, potentially, that's in your powder shaker, bringing that back into the printer. So by me cutting my job off right, when the print is done and I just feed it down, um, I think for me that's the most effective way to, to get that down there. And again, you can do it by hand. I did that for uh, a while. I, I just got tired of bending over and you know 
touching the, you know, with my sleeve, touching the ink and having to reprint images because I messed it up. You know, so now that I have this process, I don't, that doesn't occur anymore. No more. So, well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if it was helpful for you, uh, click that like button. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notification so you can be notified when we post new content. And as always, we appreciate you. Bye.